Now the next concept we're going to need is density. It turns out that density has a funny little symbol. It's the Greek letter rho. Now, unfortunately, the Greek letter rho looks a lot like a P, so you have to find some way to draw it so that you don't get it confused with P, because unfortunately we are used to doing a lot of problems with P for pressure. So that's, that's not really very good, but I don't know. Somehow you have to draw that there's a distinction between a P and a rho, because you don't want to get those confused with each other. This is pronounced rho. Now the density is the mass over the volume. Basically, the density is a measure of crowding. It tells you how much mass you're crowding into a particular volume. Let's think about the units. There's no special name for the units for density, but let's figure out what the units would be. What are the units for mass? Half kilograms. Good. And do you remember what are the SI units for volume? Meters cubed. Okay, good. Not liters, but cubic meters. Well, let's think about how would we interpret it if someone told us that something has a density of 8 kilograms per cubic meter. Well, we have our trick of putting a number on the bottom of the fraction. What would be a good number to put on the bottom of the fraction? One. So then how would we interpret this? Um, I said that we can fit 8 kilograms of mass within one uh, meter cube. Okay, that's a good start. Except we're not really thinking about fitting things here. We're simply saying that we have a substance that already has fit 8 kilograms into each cubic meter. So if we take a single cubic meter, it'll have a mass of 8 kilograms. If we take a single cubic meter, it'll have a mass of 8 kilograms. Let's give a more real-world example, the density of water. The density of water is 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter. So how would we interpret that? Water in a, taking up a, a volume of one cubic meter uh, has one, um, the mass of 1,000 kilograms. Right. What does this tell us about water? This is telling us a property of water. What's well, telling us that if you took a cubic meter of water, it would have a mass of 1,000 kilograms. It would tell us that a cubic meter of water would have a mass of 1,000 kilograms. Well, what about then if you had two cubic meters of water? How much mass would that have? 2,000. Yeah. Well, what about if you had 3 cubic meters of water? How much mass would that have? 3,000. That's right. So at first it might seem like this is not very useful information, because at first it seems like it only tells us the mass of a single cubic meter. But if you know how much the mass of one cubic meter is, it's very easy to figure out what the mass is of any volume. So it's very useful to know what the density is of any particular substance. You can see, how did we work out the mass? Well, we were basically doing the unit conversion. If you've got 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter, and you want to figure out how many kilograms that is, you would multiply that by 3 cubic meters, and the cubic meters would cancel, and you would get the 3,000 kilograms. Or we could have done it based on the formula. Based on the formula, if you know the density, how do you find the mass? I'll multiply the density times the volume. Isn't that what we were just doing over here? We were saying if we had a volume of 3 cubic meters, we would multiply it by the density of 1,000 to find the mass of 3,000. So the equation eventually should kind of become common sense if you think about the units here. So you can, uh, and again, this is kind of similar to what we saw here. Usually on the exam, they wouldn't ask you for the pressure, they would ask you for the force, and the force is the pressure times the area. Well, similarly, usually they won't ask you for the density, they'll tell you the density and ask you for the mass. Well, the mass is the density times the volume. We just saw that here. If you had three cubic meters of water, the total mass would be three times the density. Of 1,000. You can work that out from the formula or from the units. Now, in all the problems that we've been doing up to this point, we've been working a lot with mass. But it turns out that for fluids, fluid pro fluids problems work much better if you focus on density instead of mass. Very often, you should get rid of the density and replace that with mass. That's going to be an important problem-solving technique. Uh, fluids problems tend to work better if we work in terms of density and not in terms of mass. Not all the time, 
but that's a, a problem solving technique we should try to use. How can you replace the mass with the density? Well, by using this equation. So just to put that, let's put, actually put that down on paper then. What is the mass in terms of the density? That's right. If we're going to be using this so much, we might as well just write this down. This is how we can replace the mass with an expression in terms of density. So when you're doing a problem about math, about fluids, you should probably replace the mass with the density times the volume in many cases. And now we see more clearly, what does the density tell us? It tells us how crowded the mass is. It tells us how many kilograms we're squeezing into each single cubic meter. It tells us how many kilograms we're squeezing into a single cubic meter. Let's talk a little more about pressure in fluids. One important thing to have in your notes is any point in the fluid that is in contact with the atmosphere must be at atmospheric pressure. Any point in the fluid that is in contact with the atmosphere must be at atmospheric pressure. 